All right. <clears throat> Next section, five dash eight. All right. We're going to be talking about special right triangles, applying special right triangles. Now, there's triangles out there, and just like in the real world, there's triangles and there's special right triangles. Special right triangles are important because they're special. All right. If that doesn't make sense to you, read a book. All right. Forty-five, forty-five, ninety. That's our first spe special right triangle means that the angles are 45, 45, and 90, obviously, seeing as how it's a right triangle. Now, got a right angle. That has to be 45, and that has to be 45. What did we learn a while back about if the angles are congruent in a triangle? What does that mean about their opposite sides? You said it. Congruent. That means that these opposite sides right here have to be the same. So if this is X, this has to be X, okay? Now, that's old news. That's, that's old and busted. This is new hotness coming up. All right, so you got x and x. The hypotenuse, which is always opposite that right angle, the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 is always whatever that number is times the square root of two, okay? Like, <clears throat> that's it, I don't really know what else to say. This is like, a lot of geometry is like figuring stuff out. If you know the process, you can do it in a couple of the terms. This one is, you kinda gotta know these, this bit of information right here, okay? Now, I've got a little thing set up. If you're going from the 45, I call it the 45 side because it's opposite the 45. If you're going from the 45 side to this side over here, you're multiplying times the square root of 2. All right, hold on one sec. My grandpa's calling. All right, sorry. It's my birthday. My grandpa's calling me. It's really your fault. Okay, 45, 45, 90 triangle. We have. Uh, if we're going from the 45 side, which is opposite the 45, to the hypotenuse, what we're doing is we're going from x to x times square root of 2. All we're doing mathematically is timesing it by the square root of 2. Now, by the same token, if we wanted to go from the hypotenuse to one of these 45 sides, what would we do to it? The opposite. We would divide by the square root of 2. Okay? Let's say this is 7. What would this side be? 7 automatically. All right, and then this side would be seven times square root of two. The end. All right, if they want a simplest radical form, you're done. If they want it in a decimal, you're gonna have to multiply it. And that's it. All right, that's the basics of that sucker. All right, now, this little guy is like the, like the queen of special right triangles. The king right here, because obviously he's more complicated and whiny. All right, 30, 60, 90. All right, guess what the angle measures in this sucker are? You're right, 30, 60, and 90. Okay? So we got uh, 60 is, used, is always bigger than 30, so I'm labeling that down there, 30 and 90. Now, just like the special right triangle with 45, 45, 90, it's got stuff that's set and always what it is. All right? Now, 30 side, that's like our base. You know when you play hang and seat, you go to base, and then you go from there. We always want to go to our 30 side first because it's like our home plate. That's our home base, okay? Now, that's X. Like, say that X can be any number. Say that's a number, all right? Now, that number times the square root of 3 is always our 60 side. I call this the 30 side because it's opposite the 30. I call that the 60 side because it's opposite the 60. Now, triangles can be turned, obviously, but that's that. And this hypotenuse is always two times the 30 side. Okay? Now, just like the last one, I've got some arrows that you can use. That way you can look at what you're going from and you know to either multiply or divide or whatever you gotta do. Okay? For instance, if you wanna go from here to the hypotenuse, you would multiply it times two. If this is 10, this is 20. If this is 30, this is 60. If this is 150, this is 300. If you're going from this way to this way, you do the opposite, which is divide by 2. Okay? So if this is 60, this is 30. If this is 15, this is 7.5. Whatever the hypotenuse is, cut it in half to go to the 30 side. Now, let's go from the 30 side to the 60 side. What changes from x to x times the square root of 3? You're multiplying it by square root of 3. To go from this side to here, you divide by the square root of 3. All right? That's what you do. Multiply to go this way, divide to go this way. All right, let's stick some numbers in here. Let's say this was eight. This would be 16, and this would be eight times the square root of three, the end. Now, 
That's easy version. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll give you one of these suckers right here, like the hypotenuse. Oh, goodness gracious. They'll give you either the hypotenuse or they'll give you the 60 side, and they'll tell you to go to the other one. Like if they ever give it here, they'll give you this one. Do not go straight across here, okay? That just gets more complicated. Go to the 30 side, your home plate, or your home base, and then go up there. If you got here to go to here, go down here, and then go up here. Okay, I promise it's easier. I know, I have a green shirt on and sunglasses, so top that, hot shot. All right, let's try something. Let's say we have a triangle. Um, all right, this is the 60 side, and that's 30. Let's say I know that this right here is square root of 2, 7 squared is 2, okay? And I want to know what the hypotenuse is. First, I need to go to the 30 side. What arrow goes down to here? I need to divide by the square root of 3. So I do 7 times square root of 2 divided by the square root of 3. I could leave it like that. I don't want to do a decimal because I don't want to start making my answer rounded that much off, okay? What you need to do is you cannot have a radical on the bottom. So what you do, multiply it by 1. But you don't just multiply it by 1. You multiply it by something that equals 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 is 1. So I'm not changing this. I'm just multiplying it times 1 creatively. The reason I chose the square root of 3 is because I know that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which equals what? What's the square root of 9? 3. Whenever you multiply it times itself as a radical, it's going to bust it out of jail, okay? So that goes to 3. Now, here's the deal, though. To get this out of jail, you got to put your buddy in jail, okay? Or out, depending on what happens. We do 7 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, which all you do is a regular number stays 7. The square root of 2 goes times the square root of 3, which would be the square root of 6. That's the answer for the 30 side, okay? Now, what we got to do is we got to multiply this sucker times 2 to go up here. Because when we go from here to here, we times it by 2. So, leaving it in simplest radical form, we go 7, some square root of 6 over 3, times 2 equals 14 square root of 6 over 3. That can't really be reduced, so that's our answer. If they want it in a decimal, just put that in the calculator as a decimal, but just make sure you close parentheses around that 6 or else you're going to jack up your answer. Whoa, that was a lot of words, but I feel like I pretty much smoked it. All right. That's the end of that. All right, kids. Don't do drugs.